It's a beautiful morning here in Herzliya, Israel. Yuda Kahana, an economist. Danny Shechtman, a scientist. Nobel laureates in chemistry. Yuda and I are uh, friends and neighbors, and we discuss uh, important issues uh, that uh, are bothering our world and ways to solve them. Uh, the world is in crisis now, and this crisis is not going to disappear. I hear leaders in the world saying, innovation, innovation, innovation. And I tell them, you have innovation everywhere in your country. But to take the innovation and turn it into a product that can be sold and produce GDP per capita, the bridge is called technological entrepreneurship. Because entrepreneurs are exactly those people who take the technology, turn into products, sell, and take the countries to higher grounds. Technological entrepreneurship, key to world peace and prosperity. That means that we need to develop the following. Number one, better education for all. And number two, technological entrepreneurship. Human beings were created in the image of God. That means that we have the ability to create and innovate. And it's in every person in the world. We have just to ignite it. Rich countries were those that have vast natural resources. But here in this little country, Israel, we don't have natural resources. And yet, we are a developed country. <clears throat> the origin of the development of Israel is human ingenuity. Human ingenuity is the most important natural resource. Israel became a startup nation. This huge wave of innovation here and while Israel cannot provide the money to solve problems, Israel can provide the ideas, technology, and the stamina to attack a problem and bring it to a solution. You know, many people they think that, uh, that the Jews are a chosen nation because it's said in the Bible, but they interpret it in an incorrect way. It's not that the Jews got uh, all the brains of the world. I perceive it as a, as a commitment, as a job that we are supposed to bring, uh, as it said in the Bible, the light of the nation. In the developed world, we see a problem. And the problem is that young people do not want to become engineers and scientists because it is difficult to study these subjects. We need more engineers and scientists. The more, the better. And in order to encourage young people to become engineers and scientists, I started a program to teach science at a very early age. What age? Kindergarten, age five. Yes, science to kindergarten children. My theory says the following. If a young child, boy or a girl, says, I like science because I understand science, I'm good at that. Hey, this is a future engineer or scientist. The more we have these people, the more we have technology, the more we can solve problems, and the more we have entrepreneurship. To reach the educational goals, we need to reform systems. Teachers are the most important people in the world because they hold the future of countries in their hands. And this is why we should choose only the best to be the teachers. So job one of every country is to develop human ingenuity. The UN came up with the 17 SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. The education is part of the 17 SDGs, is education, of course. I would start again with the education, a conversation between leaders so that it can be, get united around the purposes. But unless we deal with the urgent problems right now, train, the engineers, accountants, the designers, the business managers, and the political leaders to understand, accept, and activate the new SDGs that the UN has uh, introduced and that countries are committed to. And the only way to do it, in my opinion, is by involving business mentors to make this transformation happen. In my uh, YK Center, we, we uh, developed uh, models that are working, we tried them. We call them transformation. These are programs 
very short programs. In three days, you make the change. You make the transformation. You, need the, you, you make the paradigm shift unless we do that urgently from B to T by 2020, we won't be able to reach these goals by 2030.